Yeah. You get to you get to do it for two minutes. Do you want to do it the the front two minutes or the last two minutes? Everyone yeah, chose the always, last two. It would always be the last two minutes because you could still void form. You could still do all the normal pre stuff, but then you would do surrender. If you no, like, uh, there was some like I think public showed like I think there was a video from back in Legion, um, public the priest theory crafter for Shadow. He uh, I think he had it rolling like um i think he had it rolling for like two and a half almost three minutes if i remember correctly you you it was your void form you couldn't choose to go into it you hit your void form you were dead at the end of it when you hit surrender to madness yes but i don't I before don't you used surrender it surrender to madness was in the first it was it was an active ability okay I know yeah, right, I remember it was in Legion because everybody was talking about to do the Mage Tower uh, for Priest. For Priest, you could do it. The well, that, that was after they changed it. Ah, okay. The The first pad, like, until 9.1, it replaced your Void Form button. They only had Emerald Nightmare. It was changed even before Trial of Valor came out. All right, I had to buy. I had to buy real quick. Sorry about that. I have oh, some wow. questions because I didn't finish the vod. I got like 20, 25 minutes. Like last I left it, Raffi was quote unquote interrogating the quote unquote prisoners. <laughs> uh, would you was... would you all like to share uh, what happened with the two gnolls that you procured, Snowhide and uh, Stinkhide? Plot that, moments. I, well, I, I, I did get to the point where they're like, hey, we talked to this chick with like, I think somebody's been watching Last of Us, spores in our bodies. And I was like, oh, fuck. And Doofus has got him in him. And I was like, uh oh. So that's where I'm at. Ah, so you didn't get to the conch question. No, I did not get to the conch question. The, was, conch, was the conch was yeah. also brought up, as was the seaweed. All right, lay it on me. The big plot reveal. It <laughs> turns out that the seaweed used by the Sahagin was also being used by this person who is supposedly the leader of the Knolls, who went away for a while and then came back and started talking about mushrooms and spores and spore binding. And, oh, hey, we got to kill Doofus because we got to do this to please the Sahagin. But, oh, my God, they might be the same. This person's calling both games. <laughs> And this guy uh, might not be a knoll. So uh, you learn that uh, Sibba, who is the uh, knoll pack leader for the yeah, that, um, the knolls that Doofus came from, cool. um, had brokered a deal with the Sahagan. And in this trade, you don't know what Sibba gave the Sahagan, but Sibba received the conch from the Sahagan. Now... One thing that the Sahagin did not tell Sibba is that uh, in the process, the, the, the conch had essentially the spirit of the, uh, the Yanan Ed, the, the god that you had disposed of on the ship, yeah. in it. And so Sibba wanted access to this, this ancient frog god, presumably for hallucinatory purposes, as her clan was known for consuming... Uh, psychedelic mushrooms in order to um, enter the dreaming. But this, uh, if she allied herself and her pack with this um, ancient hallucinogenic frog god, then uh, perhaps her control over the dreaming would become stronger. But the Sahagin, or something along the way, uh, had cursed this conch, and so the god inside had beca uh, became corrupted and, and evil and, and strange. So uh, the Sahagin were ultimately hoping to give the gnolls the bad end of a deal. Uh, Sibba found out about this uh, and did not like that and decided uh, the Sahagin were like, ah, ha, 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 we got what we wanted from the gnolls. Uh, that has not been discovered yet. Uh, and they retreated back to the oceans and gnolls can't go to the oceans. So Sibba concocted a plan. 
uh, get her, get a knoll, uh, doofus, her, her dumbest knoll, and sell him to some slavers who were crossing the divide. And, uh, while over the divide, uh, Sibba had discovered that, you know, the first person to blow the conch would be sacrificed in order to summon the, the essence of this god. So she put Doofus on the ship, um, so sold him. Uh, they put him on the ship and they were crossing over where the Sahagin, um, were dwelling. And then when they were, like, over the Sahagin area, Doofus would, uh, blow the conch and die release the god and then the god would presumably wreak havoc all over this hagen like that would that would be sibba's uh ultimate goal was yes. to unleash the yananed on the sahagen and from what you had discovered in the dreaming that that all seemingly was true doofus did blow the conch the yananed broke through the ship drug him down to the bottom uh you don't know where the conch went um the sea elves were gone um and Sibba was in the dream. So, uh, sorry, I'm not trying to, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to only stick to the plot points that you know without giving out anything else. So, with that in mind, um, so Doofus blew the conch, uh, released the Yan on Ed, uh, Doofus died, and then the, the, the god was freed. So, time has passed, you don't know what happened to the god, um, or the, 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 the spirit or the elemental, or uh, what we want to refer it to as, um, but the Yan on Ed, um, time has passed, Doofus reincarnated, and you discovered through his dream all of this, um, stuff, but the Yan on Ed, um, seemingly was still attached to Doofus for, for some reason, either, uh, like a part of the god's essence or something was still tied to Doofus, and that's how you, uh, had killed, destroyed that in the nightmare. So that bond is uh, between the nightmare and Doofus is broken. But you don't know what happened to the god. You don't know what happened to the conch. Uh, and ultimately, you don't know if you know, the god was released and feasted on all the Sahagin below. And then, or if it's just freed upon the world. But anyway, so how everything ultimately um, ended for you guys was, oh, geez, what was the exact note we ended on? I'm thinking, help me, players. It's about when we left I'm the dream, when we got yanked one. out by Elitha? Uh, no, let's see. So I think in the inn, that was pretty much all you had oh. discovered so far about the, the story of the conch, uh, the gnolls, the Sahagan, and the, the Yananid um, frog being. The frog yes. god. The, the uh, Sahagan are looking for the conch still. The... The frog monster technically could still be running around loose. We're not sure on that. We know we got a map. Uh, we know that the uh, Sibba is a necromancer, but we're not sure, and that he's controlling all the other gnolls with uh, shrooms. But now that they're wearing off, the farther they are away from him, the closer they get to Sibba, they can he can control them. Yeah, because I remember I, I got to the part where it was like, okay, we're farther enough that the shoe should matter, and it was like, okay, cool, cool. Yep. But it's still, we got to figure out how to, because either we're gonna have to kill every knoll in there, which would be near impossible, or we're gonna have to figure out how to cure this and cure them all without, because we can't just pull oh, out yeah. a few and cure them. But yeah, I when think we were talking about that. That's where we ended, and. Yeah. I remember that what popped up in my head when we were talking about that was the Wrath of the Lich King uh, Wrathgate Assault cinematic. Just make barrels of antidote and just yeet them <laughs> over into the camp. <laughs> yeah, but that might not work. we got to figure out if it can be breathed in. Do they need to drink it? I think with the hedge magic that we're learning, whatever, we're going to find an anti-fungus to get rid of the fungus. First, we've got to learn what he's using to do the fungus, probably, and find what we can do it. Okay. Very good. Well, that's our synopsis. Everybody got your uh, snackies and drinkies ready. So, Amumu, we yeah. will uh, say that you have, you know, um, finished. Uh, let's see. How did you spend your downtime? I forget. Rubbing one I, out. I, 
no, I was not good, sir. Get your oh, money. Get out. I, I took Weaver. Money. No, I was becoming wiser because a pamphlet that I found in the fucking order hall. But you know what? That's fine. You go think what you want. Did, did, it have, did it have good pretty pictures? Oh, yes. I, I can't read, so it was nothing but pictures. The most beautiful pictures, pictures of fungi. I do have a question before we get started, though. Yeah. Uh, they're currently being led by Sibba. Was the former uh, no leader before that Mufaba? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I had to stop with Sibba. <laughs> Mufaba. God damn it. No. Nah, or, or was it bars? bars. Everything. The, everything the shroom touches <laughs> is like, what about that spory place over there that's Florida we don't talk about <laughs> that you must never go there it is corrupted alright everybody ready to get back into it yarp yarp very good back into Arctis my dreaming adventurers as we once again, open on the melt, as you all well, are have... inside. Oh yeah, go ahead. One question for them. I, this is about size. I was watching some of the other VODs. Like, the characters they have on there, is those, like, are these just, like, generic ones, or can we, like, put different ones in there? Uh, I'm sorry, can you uh, rephrase? I don't understand. Like like how Gim might, looks like this dwarf from the top view, but mm -hmm. your other characters have, like, faces. Oh, yeah, the other ones I, I hand drew, um, but if you have, like, alternate art or, like, a suggestion, um, I just use a different style of tokens for, for you guys. Okay, you're, I'm just you're a slightly You're a slightly larger group, um, and honestly, I, like, I was not sure how long the session would go, so, um, you know, it takes me some time to, like, hand draw the tokens, so I used um, just a so different style. Can we hand draw our own or try to? Sure. Yeah, you can use anything as a token. It's as long as it's in a uh, you know, the the sides are all equal to one to one. You know, aspect ratio. The square. Okay. She I would get. She doesn't trust us. <laughs> I don't know I mean, if I'm I can not meet gonna draw a big D or anything. Map. I'm just. I mean, I would like to try to draw a dwarf face or something. I was just, I was just wondering about that because I saw the other vods and. Ours look different than theirs, so that's what I was just wondering. Yeah, these are um, more of, like, all-purpose tokens um, that I found that were very appropriate for your characters. I think Sindri is a recolor. I took him into Photoshop and I recolored him. Um, but the rest of you are tokens I had on hand. But if you would um, if you would like art, say, for, like, the next season of Reflection and you'd like to keep playing, um, then I would be more than happy to work with you in creating some art. Uh... If you provide me a detailed art description, uh, I will I will create it for you. Okay, I'll talk with the team later. We can discuss if we want to, because I think we all should either do it or not do it. <laughs> I'd be fine. I'm just I horrible creator, but I'm down. Well, you wouldn't have to do anything but give me a character description. I would be drawing it. Oh, okay. Well, because I have okay. a I have a very particular Arctis style, and my other tokens in uh, my other campaigns are are hand drawn. I've I've drawn them. Okay. Very good. All right, we return now back to the melt, as you all are interrogating your two new null friends that you saved from the raiding party, and I use saved in the most loose of terms. Stinkhide and Snowhide. In Namumu, bringing up the rear, you have just arrived at the melt and missed most of the action. And so you're going to be walking in with uh, very little context as to what has transpired. So can I play into that? Like, they start bad talking my friends, I could just punch one of them? You can do I don't whatever. Know. You can do whatever you like. This is D&D. &D. Uh, the imagination is, is your only limitation. You have to have a brain to have an imagination. <laughs> Joke's on you. Uh, 
Alright. Back here. I'm gonna turn down. This tavern music is absolutely banging. Back at the melt. Gim, Sindri, Montgomery, Raffaella, and Doofus all sit around in a private room that Raga Mountainheart has given to you in order to have a lovely conversation with the gnolls that you have um, kidnapped from the raiding party. The gnolls have been somewhat uh, forthcoming in the information that they have provided, uh, knowing that you all are powerful heroes and could put them to the sword with just a breath. Amumu, the afternoon has grown long, and you arrive at the melt, looking forward to having, uh, perhaps a couple lovely drinks with your friend, Doofus. And surely your party is inside, waiting for you. But where are they? Uh, I'm thinking of that meme of Donald Glover coming back in with pizza, and then the whole room's on fire. <laughs> and I've got a smile. That That's what this is. I'm so excited. You may begin. Oh. Guys, we need to come up with a plan. What do we want to do with these guys? Well, um... Oops. Sorry, Mumu, that is a door. Hold on. Oh, okay. We... we... I don't know, we could kill them. Not killing them. No, we need to be able to test an antidote on them, so it's mm. a bad idea. And they're being controlled just as much as a doofus was. We don't need wanton violence. Mm, oh, wanton. sorry, I apologize. That was a lie. That is a window. Like the one we went through the other day? Yeah, <laughs> I always forget. I was like, that is a window. I go to the bartender. Uh, Ra bar. Raga is not there. She's actually coming in from a room, or the hallway, to the east. She shuts the door quietly behind her. Oh, hello, Mumu. How are uh, you? Hey, hey, Raga. Um, so, I'm up? back at the order and looking for my friends i figured they'd be down here having a drink do you know where they are oh your your friends actually are in a private room they have acquired a couple gnolls that they're interrogating here uh, come come with me Ooh, interrogate without me Ooh. well it seems you're a little bit late to all of the action but i'm sure they can fill you in thank you there you are How is everything in there? They're still behaving? Everything's fine. Yeah. The two gnolls look up. <laughs> oh. More, honestly, more behaved than most of my patrons. And the food has been to your liking? Uh, yeah, the gnolls. Pretty good. <laughs> the gnolls look at their empty plates and nod. Good. Can we get them seconds? Absolutely. Little kindness goes a long way these days. Thank you, Ms. Rago. Uh, she leaves. Okay. Uh, Clearly, we've skipped, we've skipped some levels. We're now taking prisoners? We're, it's not, it's not <laughs> as simple as that, Amumu. Rarely is. Okay. These, these gnolls are from Doofus's tribe, and they're being controlled by their pack leader called Sibba, which we don't think is the original Sibba, and she's been poisoning them with some sort of mind-controlling fungus. So, our next plan is to figure out how to remove the fungus out of them without killing them so we can clear, uh, heal their clan, because we can't fight their whole clan. Okay, um, could they infect us? Could, could we... Could y'all be mind controlled right now? Uh, we don't. Simple. We don't believe we are carriers of this spore. It's merely ah. filled our lungs as we 
breathe the air of our grove. I was not referring to you, Furball. Gim, how do I know you're you? Mama, I'm going to throw this hammer at your face if you don't shut up. <laughs> okay, you're you. All right. Uh, what about the rest of y'all? Is everybody, y'all are you, right? Uh, what We're is all us. In your head? Mm, doofus is hey. doofus. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hi, Amumu. It's good to see you. These guys didn't hurt you, right? Uh, they tried to hurt everyone else, but they didn't get doofus. All right. Okay. So, correct me wrong, this chick may be another person we don't know yet, and we got to figure out how to not let these guys get infected. Am, am I, am I kind of caught up? Mm. Okay. They're we'll, already we'll that. infected. The, the spores are inside them. Sibba speaks to them through the spore connection. The farther they way, are away from Sibba, the less they're able to be controlled. But we need to be able to remove it because there's probably, how many in your clan? Like 30, 40 gnolls? They look at each other and count. They they nod. They hold up all their paws on their hands. Uh, they only have four fingers, so they hold up their paws and then their toes. Uh, you think it's about? Uh, let's see, about thirty to forty. So it's an average size clan, and she can uh, control them all at will. And not to mention, she probably has some sort of necromancy things that she summons that we don't see, because they're all they all become hallucinating when she uses her magic on them. They they nod. Yes, Simba gives us visions. Yes, visions of the future. So we are not storming the castle. So as for, so we need to figure out how to heal them before we get over there. Or how to remove the threat cause we, or lure Sibba out. There's a lot of options, but we do, no matter what, need to heal them. Because we can't let this, that happen to these poor innocent gnolls. Did these guys tell you where she is at least? Back at the grove. Where okay. Okay. Yes. We have a map somewhere. Ooh, a map. Oh yeah, the map. Here, let's show the map. Hold on. I have the map. Please, I need this high quality artwork. I need to print it and put it on my wall. <laughs> wow, this guy's an artist. It's going Josh, on my better fridge. Better than me. <laughs> uh -huh. The map depicts uh, what is apparently an iPhone charger. Uh, a cotton ball, perhaps an angry pig, and a sad goblin. <laughs> and some mushrooms, maybe. I completely agree with what I just heard. Alright, so we got a map. So um, the, where the mushrooms are is where their home is. I think that's our end goal. But before we head there, we need to find a cure or talk to someone and... I think we need to take these two knolls up with us to the uh, to the temple with us and see if they can be watched up there. Maybe they can put them to work so they can, don't get into people's ways. All right. I think we'll probably need to tie them up when we do that so that they don't get controlled as we uh, come up and... When we take them to the order... Well, no. If we if we take them to their place, because oh, yeah, that's where we want to go. No, right now we're not. Okay, I missed that. We need to take them to the order, so we have a place to find them. We can heal them because we can't take them with us over there without a cure. I don't know if Ellie would appreciate all we can these do is two ask. guys up there. We could always ask her. Yeah, we can ask. Hell, we could even ask Gobo, but I don't know. Gobo was suffering from the nightmare when we brought him in the last time. These two seem perfectly adequately healthy otherwise. Yeah, well, I do have the ability to ask Ellie from here if we want. 
I would, you don't mind. Because I'm not letting any of you guys kill them for no reason. Let you know now. Aww. Okay, give me two seconds. I am going to cast Sending. Okay. Uh, targeting Ellie. And I'm going to say... I remember 25 words or less. Yep. I'm, I'm counting on my fingers. So. <laughs> Found out something about Doofus. Other gnolls in Melt. Mm -hmm. Infected with fungus. Can we bring them to try and cure them at the order please 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 is too long <laughs> please is one or too long i thought i was counting on I was 24 counting. that's oh, okay <laughs> you get no please uh ellie responds to you <clears throat> uh bad facilities for gnolls, potential contamination, uh, consider other option, um, order bad, but order fine, gnolls bad, hope you all are okay, uh, miss you very much. <laughs> okay, okay so the important thing um ellie misses us we've been gone for like eight hours so <laughs> so so that's good she does care about us um but she said the order is a bad place to bring them what well, well, was we ask uh, miss raga if she needs some uh cleaners or some people to clean out their, around her place well so she can watch them until we find a cure we could do that i i think do we oh, have... hello hello i've got um a couple more servings of um, bacon and eggs thank you miss raga thanks raga there you go well, i have a question Oh, of, of course. What can I we do for a, you? We have a slight dilemma with these two gnolls. They have been affected, but can only be controlled by their pack leader, which is inside the mushroom area. But we don't, we're don't. we trying to find a cure for them. We don't believe that it's contagious. The only way to get it would be their grove. But we can't take them back to the order. I don't know if you have anyone. You can use a couple of workers around here, or just keep them around here until we figure out how to cure them so we can hmm. cure their clan. Are they still a threat? Is the spore... Are the spores going to make them erratic? Only if their pack leader comes over here. Well, if you all are putting the pack leader to the torch, hmm, what could I do with a couple gnolls? Um... Listen, do you, either of you have any skills, like Doofus over there? I, Doofus was actually quite impressive with being able to sample something and tell you what's in it. Can you both do something like that? They look at each other uncomfortably. They look down at their plates. Oh, no, 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 go on, eat. Uh, perhaps... I should not ask them questions when there is food in front of them. She uh, waits an appropriate amount of time, about 15 seconds or so, until their plates are clean. All right. Well, she looks down at the plates, picks one up, flips it over. Huh. Boy, there's not a crumb left on this thing. She looks... Dishwasher. Mm -mm. 
What is this? Um, you would, all of the plates that come back into the kitchen, you would take and lick clean and then give to someone else for them to scrub and wash and so we can reuse them. Hmm. Lick plate. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, that was easy. Now, what about this one? He points at Snowhide. Have you all been able to find out anything about that one? Uh, I know, I think he's a little more intelligent, but I think uh, his pack that he just called him Fuckface, but he only <laughs> told us what his real name was. Oh, Fuckface. Oh, that's quite rude. Um, Snow Hide, is it, uh, are you good at anything? Any trades, or? He looks down at his food, uh, back up at Raga. Uh... He just looks uncomfortable. Oh dear. Well, I suppose that is kind of a hard question. As long as they're... Good. I think I could find them something to do around here. Even if he is grumpy and potentially illiterate, and maybe I can have him uh, also lick plates in the kitchen. He just looks kind of sad. It's wrong, Snowhide. I don't want to lick plates. So what uh, do you want to do? I want to fight. I want to. Go out and hunt. I want to smell the morning air without it being overwhelmed by the smell of rotting fungi. Well, perhaps kitchen work isn't the best for you. Though I could use someone at least to protect the area around the melt. We do have a lot of travelers coming and going. A friendly face and a safe path would be good for business. And how does Snowhide tell the ones that are traveling versus the ones that want to hurt the melt? Um, well, one of them will probably be breaking things, um, and the other one will be buying things with money. And the ones that break things, you could punch in the face. Hmm. Easy enough. Well... Looks like I have a bouncer and a dishwasher. Thank you, Miss Ragga. This is not forever. We want them to be free creatures with what they want to do, but we need to heal them. And I don't want them getting recontaminated or controlled and do something that they would normally not do. That's understandable. And let's uh, try and keep them away from whatever it is that's controlling them, but if they promise to be good, I can provide them stable employment, a bit of copper in your pocket, and consistent hot meals that aren't entirely made of mushrooms. But you have to work. But you get compensated for it. I am fair, but I'm harsh. Uh, compensation for my labor? I hate capitalism. Fine. Miss Rag <laughs> Rag is going to be your new uh, temporary pack leader, so you take all work, all commands from her, right? You don't give her no trouble. And if you don't, and we have to intervene, I don't know if you'll like that very much. That is true. The order is rather close to here, and it doesn't take much for me to send word up there to bring these fine folk back down to teach you a lesson. And I think just having a warm roof over your head and the promise of a meal is more than what you already deserve. Either be good or I'm gonna let Raffi out on you. She's already itching. They both give a look over at Raffiella and at the, uh, nervously eye the wand that's at her waist. Ah. Yeah, no, no more fireballs, please. 
Jesus, Rathy, what'd you do to them? I would <laughs> certainly hate for you to find yourselves uh, at the mercy of the wonderful nature around you should things go wrong. Both of their lips, like, curl back from their teeth and, like, the very pathetic dog, like, just got... Uh, done being punished for being in the trash pose or like eyes are closed and they're like giga submissive like <laughs> please no fireballs well you have them swayed so welcome to being official employees of the melt we'll get you some halfway decent clothes and get you to work and here she puts, like, five copper on the table for, for both of them. It's not much, but welcome aboard. Let this be the start of potentially a fruitful relationship. You go with Miss Braga, and she'll get you uh, doing what you're doing. All right, don't be too worried. Don't worry, we won't... Uh, we won't... Go through a lot at once. I'll show you around. And then, uh, we'll take a walk. Just around the melt to get, um, to get your bearings. Come now. <clears throat> ah, Snowhide turns to the rest of you. Thank you. He says grudgingly. Don't worry about it, Snowhide. We're here to try to protect people. I know that everything's your fault, but you learn better from this. We will be... We will be good. Snowhide grumbles. Come on, you two. Uh, the gnolls leave with Raga. Shutting the door behind them. All right. Well, Gim, you're the healer. You got any idea where to go? We can't bring him back to the order. No, they're staying could, here. Could well, I, I, I? We gotta cure him. Could I try to do a nature or arcana check to see if I could figure out something that would cure the fungus? Absolutely. Which one? Um, either one. I'll let you choose. Okay, I'll give myself guidance. Uh, Arcana. Right. Arcana. With a 16, these sort of um, fungi usually have a... Um, <clears throat> what is considered the core of the fungus. Something that... Uh, leads their entire spore pod. And by killing its uh, nexus, the main potential host, the spores will eventually die off as they are not being cultivated. Also, they would have to be away from the spore grove long enough for the spores to disperse. It is more of the uh, persistent reapplication of the spores that is <coughs> um, causing them great concern. Okay, so Doofus being away for how long he is, he's probably pretty close to being cured. A doofus is probably entirely dormant because the spores uh, probably don't live in an undead body. They would probably need something alive. Okay. So yeah, we, we just have to get them far enough away but or kill the, the leader. Mm -hmm. And they would have to be away for a pretty significant um, amount of time. Okay. Some um, rudimentary medicine would also potentially purge it. Um, but it would take at least a week of treatment. Okay, so good news, bad news. It'll probably take maybe about a week to cure each knoll. 
And I don't think we have that kind of time. That was 40 knows. No. So if if we can kill the pack leader, it will solve our problems. But we're gonna have to go through all the other knolls as well. I think we should probably scout out our way out and check out what we're actually facing. Do you think there's a way that we can put them all like <clears throat> to sleep? So we only have to deal with her? <clears throat> or maybe knock unconscious? Not so we don't 40. kill them? Uh, oh, Doofus wow. turns and looks at uh, all of them. Alright. If, if the rest of Sibba's knows are imbibing in the hallucinogens, maybe you just give them lots of hallucinogens. Feed them many mushrooms. Would that kill them? Uh, no, but they would probably be on the ground in another land for at least a couple of hours. So we're gonna have to. Okay. Can we pull up the map again? Ah, uh, yes. You don't well, remember what the <laughs> map looks like, Gim? Oh, I've discussed it's, some things. It's a pig, a mushroom, and an iPhone charger. All right. So there's the milk, and I'm thinking. I think we should go to where that box is in the middle. Let's check out what that is. Cause that's a mountain range, it looks like. Just get to scout to see what what's over there. Is that a lake? Is that a bush? I can't tell what's north of that. D Doofus, do you recognize anything on this map? My memory is still very hazy, but uh, I know I sense this general area is correct. I think the large thing here is a heartwood tree. Yeah, he points to the thing that's above the Apple iPhone charger. A heartwood tree, okay. Heartwood is a old, a ancient wood that uh, has various magical properties, often used in the honing and creation of wands and staves. <laughs> Definitely something we want to check out. But what's that below there? Is that like a keep, a castle, a house? He looks at uh, the map again. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. The mushrooms, yes, that must be the grove. And the large, fluffy thing next to it. Probably the heartwood tree. The square thing under it, I do not. I do not know. That is very strange. Yeah, I think we should rest up for the night and then head out there first thing in the morning. That's just my suggestion. At least let's check out the heartwood tree. Doofus, where would we find something to give them a bunch of hallucinogens? Doofus thinks. Mm -hmm. The mushroom grove is... Probably rife with them, but probably has many knolls. Ah. Uh, mm. You are dreamwalkers. You, can you put them to sleep, maybe? I mean, I can, but it would involve somewhat of pain. But, uh, hey, you asked for options. Ah, hmm. I remember there is water vaguely somewhere near the grove, keeping it moist and well supplied. If we were to potentially put something in that water, it would affect all of the knolls in the cave. Do you know where we get some of this stuff to hallucinate? He, or to put it over. Without having enough plants and bulk, something that would persist, I... Uh, 
Perhaps it would be easier if we just poison their food and set up a trap of some sort. These gnolls have only been dining on fungi and mushrooms for some time. They would be easily lured by the smell of fresh meat. Would it be able to lure the cult? He thinks. I think it would be easier to hunt and roast one animal to potentially feed a tribe than it would be to try and coerce them all out. <laughs> this might be your stick, Amumu. I don't know shit about hunting. I don't... Apologies, guys. I've got to take just a minute. Shit, wife. No, okay. Uh, Doofus thinks. Now, prepared. If I prepare the roast with the right amount of herbs and spices, and I do mean the special herbs, we could potentially force them all to go to sleep and take a rather enjoyable nap. It would take me some time to find the correct herbs, but I would need much smaller quantities than I would if we were to poison the well, so to speak. But you all would have to find me a su uh, sufficiently fat carcass to roast. Like a deer? He thinks any meat, and I do mean any meat. <laughs> Would one of those gnolls work that we, uh, that are left turn outside? <laughs> Doofus Sindri. gives you a look! Ah! Oh my god, Sindri just... Oh. Would... Hey. Practically, yes. Emotionally, no. Hey, I'm... I'm Sorry, Doofus. <laughs> Jesus. I'm just trying to be efficient here. Sindri, Can anybody else... murdering any of these gnolls. <laughs> Well, no, no. Can we, I get some there's uh, like, cannibalism? There, there's like eight gnolls out back from when Raffi decided to char them. Sindri, <laughs> Sindri, try, try to read a room. Just, uh, <laughs> just a little bit. We all remember what happened. We're not going to make you, Doofus cook a gnoll. That's no, just, no, that's I, not I, happening. Doofus it's, like, it's, like ask, it's like asking you to try to cook Raffi because she died horribly in some terrible accident. Why me? <laughs> Good meat, go to waste. Raffi, it's because <laughs> I had to pick, I had to pick someone that I pick somebody be else. Be a friend. Could be guaranteed be a friend. Pick somebody can else. Just, can, we, can we have this conversation later? No. I don't want to talk about it again. Yeah. We're having fine. All right. All right. Can Jeez, anybody no, else? No okay. I have a weird plan. I have, and I'm just spitballing here. Mm -hmm. Can anybody else shape shift? No. What I'm thinking is, I can disguise myself as an owl. If somebody else can disguise themselves as something or another knoll, maybe that would be a safe way. That we can get them out to eat. That way they don't try to murder us. Because if we go as us, they're probably not going to eat anything we give well, them. Well, there's a lot easier I, way. I, I can do it as well, Raffi. We just need to get... like we go. Let's go hunting. Amumu is from the wilds. He should be able to capture or kill some deer. And then while we're capturing this deer, Doofus is going to be gathering up the herbs. And we're just going to set up a... It's like not a bonfire, but like a campfire, and just start roasting these things and leave them outside their what is it called? Their grove, and they all come running out. We're not gonna okay, so we don't need to be there. No, we're gonna be hiding, watching them all run out to eat. Okay, okay, that works too. Oh, doofus nods. Ah, roasted meat. Yes, that would surely bring them out of the grove. 
How long will it take you to find your herbs? He thinks. Mm. About as long as it may take you to find a sufficient place to hunt. I would say about three hours or so. Okay. So, uh, where do you guys want to go hunting? Yeah, let's go. All right. And do uh, this. Uh, they can wait. watch you cook and see what you can do. No, no, no. So, he, this will do two things. The, he's got to find the herbs. Yes. Yeah, but he's got to cook it. There are certain herbs that, and, well, other mushrooms that I can mix in that will cause anything to become sleepy and tired and relaxed. I don't think you should be wandering the wild. You're going to go into the wild looking for this stuff, right? He nods. That is unfortunately a risk I will have to take. But he holds up uh, Nightmare's Bane. But I will be safe. I have the bane of nightmares. <laughs> Doofus seems braver. You guys want to uh, split the party? Yeah, probably would be a good idea. Yeah, I can... I can try to communicate if things go real south. Well, one problem, Gim. I don't have a bow and arrow. I mean, I could chuck my axe at it, or a javelin, but I'd risk, like, pretty much destroying all the meat. Uh, Doofus no will not need an escort. You all focus on hunting and bringing back the fattest meat you can. And if you bring back multiple carcasses, yes. That is also sufficient. Yeah, that would work. I pull out a, a light crossbow. This uh, should be able to help. I mean, it doesn't uh, have to be a deer. We need to find something like a wild, a regular boar or a deer or something. We need to go find some meat. Hell, they mm -hmm. eat anything. I said we go find some sahagen. Eat them that. Okay. Doofus, will you cook us a sahagen if we find one? Uh, uh, I would prefer nothing that is intelligent enough to communicate with others. It would possibly cause issue here in civilization. Okay. Just wondering. Most kitchens are not want for uh, chopping up humanoids in them. Perhaps something like, you know, a pig or a boar or a massive stag or moose. Ooh. Yeah, we'll, we'll right. keep our eyes out. You guys, where you guys want to go hunting? Outside. Well, we should We're probably good, good start time. making our way Wait, what toward... time is it? Is it getting dark? Uh, it's late afternoon. I don't think we should be hunting before dark. No, but... early morning is the best time to go, right at daybreak. That's when they're they're waking up, and just like us, they eat breakfast. Well, D Doofus, how long is the trek to your group? Do you uh, remember? Doofus doesn't remember, but there are mountains here. Uh, yeah, like it's probably gonna be a couple days travel. We could ask the other ones how long it is to their camp start making our way over there and then hunt when we're closer. Yeah, we could do that. Definitely. That's probably <laughs> a better idea. Uh, the pickings of meat may be slimmer around the area of the grove. But if we are a day's travel away, that might... That might be better. Yes. Yes. That may be good. This but place it... is, smells too much of... Human and other. Yeah, even if it's a three-day travel, we risk the meat going bad before we get there. Meat holds pretty well in the cold. Doofus may take the remaining bits of light to go collect the herbs. 
Do you need any of us to come with you? He shakes. He shakes his head. No, no, no. You should all rest. Rufus will be okay. He takes Nightmare's Bane out and wields it in one of his hands. Rufus feels confident now. And I will not go far. Don't forget, you still have your test for the kitchen when we're done with all of this. Mm. He makes an excited sound and shuts the door. We should go probably go rent a room. Or we all gonna sleep in here. Do we want one room, two rooms? I honestly don't know like how big these rooms are, the bedding situation. I have no idea. We gotta talk to Miss Ragged and rent yeah. as many rooms as we need. Pretty sure Raffi needs a room of her own, but she doesn't mind camping out with us. I call I don't Big Spoon. Um, no. No? Mm -hmm. No touchy. Right, yes, let's go, ma'am. Let's go see Miss Let's go see Miss Raga. Raga is back behind the bar, serving uh, the other patrons who are at the melt. Oh, hello, everyone. The gnolls are in the kitchen, oh. uh, busily licking plates. Well, at least one of them. The other one is sulking a bit by the fire. I'm... I'm gonna give him some time. That might be an idea. Um, question for you. How many sure. rooms you got? For you all, I'll make room. Do you need one for the night? Yeah, we want to, we're going to head out in the morning. She nods. In fact, one of my larger rooms is available. Come on, I'll show you where it is. Hey, Durgan, sorry we had uh, some stuff to take care of. We're going to check under our room. I'll be back. Uh, that's fine. Thanks for talking with me. I think the gnolls will settle in just fine here. After a time. Come on up. Nice dissolve. <laughs> nice dissolve. Ooh, that is nice. Does the arrow automatically do that for us? It does. Uh, don't go back down. <laughs> don't go back down. <laughs> I was confused. I'm sure this is nothing, but um, I seem to be stuck in an abyss. I'm going to see if I can fix that. Mm. Wondering where, <laughs> where did Monty go? Oh no. Hold on, I'm gonna. Uh, Montgomery, Montgomery is hanging downstairs at the bar, just, just taking a sweet tying his shoes. He's tying his shoes. <laughs> uh, one moment. Oh, I am also lagging. Hmm. It is at this moment we find out that Montgomery's original actor is being let go from the contract and a uh, slightly older but not so picky about salaries actor is coming in to play Montgomery. <laughs> oh no, you're being recast! Ah! The good old soap opera swap. And in the middle of a season too, damn. Oh, I yeah, cannot place you on, on the canvas. Stuff. Uh, I'm also going to refresh. One moment. Oh, oh my gosh, we got two! Oh, oh, no, we got three. there's too many! Oh, oh god, Lord. there's three! Okay, well, the lag is catching back Double up. Gangers. See, this is what happens when the thing lags out and it's like, ah, yes, I'm still gonna hold the last action you did. 
But now that's why we now have three Montgomerys. Son of a bitch. If we had three Montgomerys, we would have like 12 bees. <laughs> All the bees. You would have 15 bees. That's so many bees. All right. We can fight all the gnolls. We have three Montgomerys. <laughs> Just send in the bees. All they hear in the tunnels is. What the fuck could have is one that? of the Montgomerys turn into a deer. We kill it. Done. We don't even have to go hunting. Well, he doesn't become a. He stops then, being then a would, deer. For I, then he would turn back into <laughs> himself. I, I feel. I feel targeted. Uh oh. So, so, uh, so one thing. Um, the forge has been going down lately, the, their servers. Um, I had to actually cancel our Wednesday game because the forge servers went down, uh, again. And I think they're going down again. Um, I'm oh, checking into the forge discord. Uh. Jim, pray, pray. Forge, pray. serve pray. us. We have, your, your humble servant needs you. <laughs> Error code 507, forge could not be found. All right. Ah, oh, good. I see things now. Good. Now let us continue as Raga takes you upstairs. Eager to give the uh, heroes from the Order of the Luc Lucid Crescent a warm room. All right, this way, everyone. Now, I've got a large room. Usually, people from the Order request to room together. Um, so, this is one of my larger rooms. It's got multiple beds. It's got a couple pullouts as well. But also, it's got a meeting room, just in case you need to, you know, have some privacy and talk. Please, make yourselves comfortable. Go on in. Now, if any of you would like a private room, I do have some smaller ones available. But please, make yourself comfortable. I insist. Thank you, Raga. Thank you very Go. much. And let me know if you need anything at all. You'll find the, uh, the loo is down the hall this way, just around the corner. Thank you, Mr. Raga. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there is a woman sitting in the room. She looks up as you all enter. Um. What is this pot? Where is this woman of which you speak? I just see yeah, a big I pot. I, yeah, I see a big pot. Is it a pot? Oh, it's not a pot. There is actually a, a oh, woman a, in there. Oh, the oh. light. I can see it. Her face. She's like very, very white and white hair. Yes. Oh, I could see it. Uh, I think it's because of the it's light. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. The brightness is turned up too high. Uh, yeah, I thought it was like a bucket of water. <laughs> Hold on, let me turn down the brightness of this. this strange cauldron shaped fucking... woman sitting in the room in front of you. There's a woman sitting in the chair. Um Raga didn't seem to notice as you all uh as you all enter. There's a slender fey woman, and the chair is a little bit larger than she is, and delicate um, see-through wings flutter on her back that look like dragonfly wings and a series of tattoos force down her right arm. Montgomery is a friend of yours? I do not believe we've met. She gives a yawn <sighs> and then pauses as she looks around at all of you. Oh, I... <clears throat> Hello. Hello, Miss. Uh, we are uh, from the from the order. Uh, any way we can assist you? I uh, 
Uh, make me an insight check. I am so sorry. I seem to have gotten my rooms mixed up. I, I think I just came in here on accident. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry if I've taken your room. Good. No, quite all right. There's a chance we were given this room and wasn't understood that you were here. I oh, a simple I... misunderstanding. Why don't I just go back downstairs? And clear up this little miscommunication. I am so sorry. I I must have just wandered in here on accident. I would like to make a... For her, it would be a deception check. For me, it would be a perception check, correct? That would be insight. Insight. Okay, yeah. I'd like to make an insight check as well. Uh, something fishy. Sure. Uh, that's a 14. What? Oh, the Look at that wisdom. <laughs> See, I studied the pamphlet. The pamphlet provides. <laughs> that one wisdom is exactly what you needed in order to uh, really get an idea of what this fey woman is up to. As she was slumped down in the chair, nestled up by the fire, she probably broke in here and probably through one of the windows. Okay, do I notice any of the windows open ajar, any of that with this uh, insight check? Uh, no, they're both closed. The insight will only tell you about um, her deception. And she is very clearly trying to lie to the group that she wandered here on accident. Uh, right, she did right. not. She actually came here purposefully, uh, broke in, and thought this empty room would be a great place to take a nap. I stand in front of the door to prevent her from leaving and hold a hand up. Ma'am, please. Uh, this is your room. I'm pretty sure the innkeeper knows this place like the back of her own hand. So you want to try again and explain why you're here? As Amumu is doing that, I'm going to cast the tech thoughts. Yep. On, on her. Oops, sorry, I have to target her. Uh, it's saying... I targeted her, but I'm requesting... I'm asking for a saving throw? Oh, that's fine. I will make the uh, wisdom save one moment. What's my what's my DC? What's your spell casting? Uh, so me three seconds. Oh my Three. god! Cindy, oh, you yeah. have to make 14. it. Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, she shuts you out of her mind. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. Curious group you are. Uh. I just wanted a little bit of a nap. No harm in that, right? <sighs> I What's would your like name? to intimidate. Sorry, uh, go ahead. I need you to uh, first tell me what you are doing. I am standing in front of her, arms crossed, looking maniacal at her, saying, I don't appreciate being lied to. Tell me the truth. Oh, um, make me an intimidation check. It, I cast it. Hold on, give it a second. I'll try again. Oh, there we go. Awesome! Yeah, <laughs> that's... I, um... Right. Uh, listen, I'm not really looking for any trouble... Just kind of wanted a free room. I didn't really do anything to your room, so I'm really just okay with calling it a wash. What's your name, young lady? Uh, my name is Tala. What was it? It's Tala. 
She's taller. Mm -hmm. Right, Tala, where did you come from? Uh, she thinks. I've been doing a little, you know, wandering about here and there, but I've just come from Arcteris, actually. Spend some time in the mountains. Do you happen to see gnolls and some mushrooms? She, uh, thinks. Gnolls and mushrooms. Um, no, can't say that I did. I, I came into a seer from the south, um, and I was leaving the Arcteris Mountains. Can't say I haven't seen many mushrooms. Why? Just curious. There's some knolls downstairs. That's where they're from. So we were just trying to figure out where it was. Hmm. Can't say I can be any help. Now, Miss Tala, about how long have you been in this room, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, she kind of reaches down and rubs her, uh, rubs her ankles. Um, about four hours or so. I see. Did you happen to hear the, uh, commotion that went on in the bar downstairs about, uh, 30, 40 minutes ago? She, uh, glances around. No, can't say I did. Oh, it was, uh, qu it was quite the event. You should have... You, I'm surprised you didn't hear anything. The whole soundstage had to be stopped, and they had to spend so much time cleaning up plates and mugs and steins that were just thrown all about. Uh, no, I've been... Uh, I've been pretty tired. So it's been pretty silent. You haven't heard any commotions in the last, oh, say, hour and a half or so. Nope, not a thing. Just been dead asleep. Ah. Can I possibly inspect to see why she was rubbing her ankles? Uh, yes, uh, you can make me a medicine check. Uh, Gim, with Detect Magic, because she is a fae, she is innately radiating um, powerful magic, she is made of magic, but there is a familiar magic on her, something that you also sensed on the gnolls. Uh, it appears that this fae has also been imbibing the same hallucinogens that the gnolls have been eating. Um, she didn't pass out in the chair. She's probably been sitting here for a while. Um, just vibing. All right, miss. I can tell you've been, uh, lying to us. Because you have, uh, some of this spore magic on you that we were safe and relieved from the, the gnolls downstairs. Like, care to tell us the truth of what's happening? We'd like to help you if possible. She, uh folds her arms and sits back in the chair. <laughs> Fine. <sighs> she sighs. Uh, she thinks and considers before speaking. I picked up some uh, mushrooms from some knolls that I saw coming in from the west. I uh, came in over the mountains and found this little weird little grove that had some mushrooms and these gnolls in it. And, uh, you know, I thought, hey, boy, it sure would be hilarious if I uh, snuck some of these m mushrooms into the, uh, you know, food supply. Um, and, you know, once everybody was just good and dreaming um and we would have a really good time uh monty with that medicine check um <clears throat> whatever she's been imbibing has been uh 
causing her to walk much more often. Uh, she has taken a drug that has inspired dancing. Um, and you've heard tales from the Fae that even some Fae have been able to uh, <clears throat> make others dance to such the extent that their feet begin to bleed and other cruel fae have been known to make others dance to such the extent that they wear their legs down to stumps. It is a manner of, uh, well, just exactly what kind of fae you are talking to. But as her feet have been um, a little bit more worn, she has probably been partaking in some dancing You sure seem to have some interesting friends, Miss Tawa. Ah, uh, wherever I go, I try and make friends. You know. Ah, uh, in any way, they had a very curious garden, and I was interested in checking it out. Did you bring any of those mushrooms with you here? She, uh, pats her waist and I have some left. Are you Did looking you to food supply here? Um <laughs> She uh gives a little giggle. Maybe that uh, was the Dumbest thing you could have ever done. <laughs> oh, come on. What What's going to happen? Everybody here is going to start dancing and have a fantastic time. And then I'll dance with them for a little while. I'll, and then they'll all just pass out on the floor of the nice warm inn. Nobody's going to get hurt. It's going and to be... And they're uh, all going to be controlled by a necromancer. What? What are you talking about? Yeah... What? There's a necromancer controlling, growing this fungus to control the pack of gnolls, and now you've just spread it to a bunch of innocent people, to include <laughs> yourself. Uh, wh what? That's that's preposterous. These are just mushrooms that uh, make people see visions and connect to the dreaming easily, uh, more easily. Well, at least not yep. connect to it. You just kind of think you do. But... There's nothing wrong with them. She, like, sniffs them and holds them out to Gim. I'm fine. Give me those. Miss Tala, you may be fine because you already walk within the dream. But the problem is this person that is currently becoming quite the aggravating thorn in our side also has access to the dream so if you're opening up a whole bunch of minds you are now making it a lot easier for things that are trying to hide to be found she uh looks like she's about to say something sarcastic and then closes her mouth again uh -oh. you're not the first i've met of your kind let's try to keep this civil um Okay, well, one, I totally didn't know that the mushrooms were, like, possessed? I don't, like, I don't know. They, these are just normal, <sighs> she sighs. I'm not trying to hurt anybody, just have bag? a little fun. Um, they're in, like, a leather pouch. Okay, could you please hand me that pouch? I want to examine these mushrooms. Yeah. All right. Here you go. Um, she hands you the pouch. They, they're not a physical item, so she just hands you the pouch of mysterious mushrooms. Okay. Make me a nature check, please. Monty. Yeah, I want Monty to check them with me as well. Monty, let's check out these uh, mushrooms. Sure. And Miss Tala, no way am I blaming you for the un doubted consequences that are about to occur. However, we do need to figure out exactly how much has been distributed for about how long so that we... Well, the cleanup needs to happen. 
Uh, Monty, with a 22, these are rhyme shrooms. Now, normally rhyme shrooms grow in colder environments, uh, unlike most mushrooms, like cold and uh, moist environments. Um, and they have a particular mind-altering effect when eaten um, that usually gives the imbiber visions of uh, like winter or snowstorms. It's a very like hazy, almost um, lethargic type of effect. Um, normally in small quantities, it's not anything really to, to worry about, but in uh, heavier concentrations or if they are grown under the right circumstances, uh, you think these rhyme shrooms could become much, much, much more potent. Now, as you're examining these shrooms, they're light blue, and underneath their gills are like a dark blue, and you give them a, like a, a fluff, and the uh, dark blue spores fall out into your hand. But normally, these spores would be like fluffy and something that would be easily carried on the wind or in the snowstorm. But as they uh, hit your hand, you notice that they have like a, a black ichor to them. It looks almost like oil drops. And as you look at these spores, which are more liquid than solid, uh, the black droplets each sprout almost spider-like legs and begin to crawl around on your hand like tiny infested mites or bed bugs. I open up a uh, vial from my herbalism kit and hide them away as soon as I can. Uh, Gim, since you have Detect Magic still on, this uh, mushroom has been grown and cultivated in a highly magical environment. Either the uh, how it was grown, the water that it has been nurtured with, or it has been... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? fertilized by more magical means. All right, Miss Tala, these mushrooms have been contaminated with some sort of evil, evil magic. What, did you, how, where, when did you put it in the food? How long? And oh, we need to know because we need to try to destroy it. Have people been eating it already? Uh, well, it's been thinks it's about an hour or so I was waiting for you know the sun to go down and then we could all start partying <sighs> my feet were just so sore from the last dance we had I was really looking forward to having another one we need to get those knolls yes before something bad happens let's go you're coming with uh, can we Restrain her? Or <laughs> you think we should restrain her, guys? I got some rope. If we want her to, we don't want her to escape. We want her to yeah. talk to Miss Rega. Restrain her. Uh, she is going to choose to fly uh, up to the ceiling. Um, you are going to have to make a grapple check. All right. All right. Well, uh, uh, the only the only people that can do it are the people who are. Oh, Immediately adjacent to her. So All Sindri right. and Montgomery, or she's going to fly straight up. Raffi uh, can do it too. What? Oh, and Raffi. And Raffi. Yeah, Mumu, you are also across the room. Yeah, but I, I have a question before we start this. How tall are the ceilings in this room? Uh, 10 feet. Okay, 10 feet. How tall is she? Uh, 1.6 feet. All right, Roger. I was waiting for 9 feet 11 inches. I, I, no, <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, I was thinking like she's normal size. I'm like, oh, this shit's way easier. No, for she's probably normal. like like one like short of maybe two feet tall. Jesus, size of you, Henry Kitty. All right, all right, continue. You stay with the door, Momo. No, I got the door. Uh, for all of you trying to grapple the fairy who's trying to s escape to the ceiling, make me an acrobatics or athletics check. Mm mm mm. Mm. <laughs> Raphael, I'm... athletic people. You know what? I'm going to use my uh, inspiration. Okay, reroll. Yes. 
Birthday. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Birthday brother. inspiration. Uh Paula is trying to fly up to the roof as she sees everybody converging on her. Oh no 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 no. Uh and Sindri looks like he's about to miss and then grabs her uh, around the arm. Hey! Let go of me! No, uh, that's not how this is going to work. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to just dance the night away? Come on, it's not going to be that bad. Shut up, Van with, <sighs> with drugs that will put you under the spell of a necromancer? No. Oh, come on, a necromancer? They're just mushrooms. Yeah, and I am the king of, I don't know, a, a town, a random town name. <laughs> oh. Well, they're going to start having fun one way or the other, because I think... I think this stuff is going to start kicking in pretty soon. We need to restrain her and bring her with us. <laughs> yeah. See when do Move along, come here and uh, tie her up. Yeah. I got oh, this no. Raffi, you're good at tying people up. Yeah, <laughs> phrasing. No, she helped me tie up the knolls earlier. I was having trouble. Oh, well, not phrasing. Um, what is it? Sleight of hand check. <laughs> oh, is yeah, she? I uh, think my hands are tired. <laughs> uh, the rope is just too big to tie up the small fairy, and she kind of laughs as you. Uh, <laughs> it, it just looks ridiculous as you try and tie the normal sized rope around Anybody her. Got like a jar. Three inch waist. Um. I got hey. a backpack. Don't put me in a backpack. Why not? I think I have... it'd be fun to put you in the backpack. I'll put you in the backpack. Either that or, you know, we just wrap just you up. put her in one of these pillowcases. You oh. put me in that backpack and Drag you're not going to have stairs. a backpack. I I'm, oh, oh, I'm shaking in my big boots. You had the option to tell us the truth. You lied. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody got a container? Hold on. Let me see. We gotta put her in something. Here, we'll just put her in the pillowcase. I'm telling you, she fit. What a pillowcase? What am I, an angry cat? Yeah, kind of. A stupid angry cat, actually. <laughs> Brood, how was I supposed to know these mushrooms were weird? All I know is that the rhyme shrooms—they make you chill out. Now we can put it's on some music. Cool to give people uh, shit they don't know about. But they'll have such a good time. I, All right. These I are so uptight. All right. Um, I'd like to try. Oh, so we are putting in their bag because I'll try a slide of hand and oh. do a rope. Okay, we're putting it in the bag. Sindri, help me stuff her in this pillowcase. What? I will. This is, this is some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen. But please continue. Yes, please. <laughs> Can it at least what? be a clean pillowcase? The mushrooms Fine. weren't clean, and you stuck those in your mouth, so Damn. I don't know what you're worried about. <clears throat> All right, at least open it up and blah. I'll get in it. Come on, Hevo. I, I I put her in the the pillowcase. She stands at the bottom of the pillowcase and looks up at you. There, satisfied. I grab it and pick it up. Huh? And a, as we're going, I. Accidentally, uh -huh. on purpose, crank it against the table. Oh, what? Oh, what the, what the <laughs> hell? Give me that bag. I, I, I whisper I... in her head. Next time, maybe don't do things to people without their expressed written consent. <sighs> Should we? They don't know what the they're broken? missing. All right, and tie them not in the bag. Yeah. yeah, let's not. We need a hurry. Stop torturing this. We gotta go help everybody. Yeah, we'll, I'll deal with this. You guys go. Don't kill her. Oh, I'm not gonna kill her as I'm tying up the bag. 
you can talk to me in my head, you know. Yeah, I know. She, <laughs> she just kind of struggles in the bag. <laughs> it's okay to have fun, but do it respectfully. Please. Raga. All these people, they're so uptight. They need a good time. Where is Raga? Let me check the chicken. I'll go out here to the stable. Can I jump over the bar? Ah! Uh, the bar has an open side on this side. I, I, I was gonna just, like, rush and do, like, that bar <laughs> hop. Uh, make me slide over. an acrobatics or athletics check. Oh, yeah. Skrrr! <laughs> 16. Uh, he's licking plates. Hello, hello, Gim. Nice Raga. Um, yes, and so you see Snowhide, and oh, hello, everyone. Um, stop eating the food for just a little bit. What do you mean? Uh, there is the food's been poisoned. What poisoned? Um, some mushrooms that, uh... Rhyme mushrooms, what you called it? Yeah. Oh my god, where did I hide Raga? I'm walking around looking for her. Like, what the fuck? Where did she go? mischievous fairy there we go she's back she's in the kitchen she's supposed to be in the kitchen miss raga there's a we caught this mischievous fairy in our room apparently she and poisoned I up the all bag uh, hello uh, what um that was in your room yes uh, i'm so her. sorry but she said she put these mushrooms They've been contaminated. This is the stuff that's contaminated the, the knolls and everybody's food. She said it had been about an hour. She wanted them, the people to dance or whatever, but I'm afraid people are going to, very soon, are going to start acting weird. Raga kind of blinks and rubs her eyes. I thought I was feeling a little bit tired. Just a little bit out of sorts, but I did eat some of that food. You're telling me this fairy... Snuck a bunch of rhyme shrooms into our meals. Yes, ma'am. She frowns these, very deeply. These are not regular rhyme shrooms, unfortunately. This is a poison, right? These are the these are the rhyme shrooms that unfortunately have been infesting our two knolls here. Uh they would normally be a poison. But they have a secondary magical component that is not poison-based. But even if it's just this little bit of that they got, it's still enough to contaminate them a lot? Uh, it is enough to contaminate the source. If you find the uh, original food and perhaps cure poison on it, you might be able to stop any further contamination. Alright, uh, Paolo, where'd you put the food? Did it, where, where's the original stuff? I just... Threw it in with the big pot of stuff that was cooking. Miss Ragger, where's the pot that was cooking? Snowhide was stirring it. Snowhide? How was evening stew coming along? He turns and just grunts. <laughs> Snowhide, did you eat the stew? He nods. And have you served it? He nods. <sighs> well, this will be the uh, venison stew I had cooking for the evening. She looks into it. And you're saying she snuck in and dropped the mushrooms in here. Yeah, it's probably not going to be easy to get out. We're going to have to throw away this whole thing. 
We have been serving it. How many people have eaten it? He thinks. I think I've given out about five or six bowls of it. All right, you're gonna need to quarantine those five or six people and snow hide. And myself as well. Oh, this is terrible for business. What am I gonna tell them? Just ask them to come to the back. We don't want to start a panic. Tell those people you want to give them a tour. And we're gonna lock them in the storage shed for now. The storage area. Oh, is that necessary? Perhaps we could just lock them in a room and the storage area. Oh. Probably not room. the storage area. There's food in there. Don't put them in there. All right, we're gonna take them to that room we were at earlier. Not our room. No, not the one upstairs. The one. No, we the were one. To the oh, the no, side no, 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 no. I'll give them. I'll give them free rooms. They'll get free rooms. I just want them to be happy. I don't want them coming back and saying, "Oh yes, I went to the melt and I got poisoned." Yeah, that's not very good for business. Okay. Yeah, but we gotta secure them. Well, we just need them to be away from everybody else. We can get them upstairs. Yeah, hopefully, whatever they've eaten will not affect them too badly. Oh, oh, I'm just, like, tired, but I feel like I want to just move around. Gim, do you have the ability to purify food or drink? I do not at this moment. I didn't, I didn't memorize that. I know I can remove a poison from a person. But I well, don't have the clear the food. I was prepping for battle, not prepping for um for this. Well, there's not a whole lot more we can do with this, except uh, we need to start getting rid of this stew and getting rid of some of the contaminants. All right, everyone. Now here's our kitchens. The famous kitchens of the Melt are known for uh. A fine variety of North Assyrian cuisine. <clears throat> uh, well, here are the five that have eaten some of our venison stew. A bugbear, Durgan, uh, a hobgoblin, a halfling, and a dragonfolk all crowd the hallway. They're peering into the kitchen, wondering why they're getting the special tour from Raga. How uh, are you all feeling right now? They, uh, all have smiles on their faces, and amidst a couple yawns here and there, uh, it, it looks like they're almost, like, nodding off, but the smiles on their faces are oddly alert, and each of them are kind of shifting from side to side on their feet as if they were anxious. Raga also begins to yawn, her eyelids drooping, and she starts also kind of bouncing from side to side. Mm. Oh. Hey guys. Everybody looking kind of tired. Might as well, well call it a night. It's about its... Early afternoon. I want to dance. Okay, I want to dance more in the in the bar. Yes, I would love to dance too. Now yeah, let's go dancing. No, I think I think you guys should probably go to your rooms. Uh, Raga is leaning up against the wall. <sighs> She puts a hand on her head. I'm not feeling very well. Do you need help me take somewhere, Miss Raga? No, I just need to make sure that the inn is fine while I rest. We can watch the inn while you're gone. All right, everyone. Let's... Oh, please. Your rooms are all compensated. Hmm. 
for tonight. Free rooms. Go upstairs. Roger holds her head. Um. Mm. The rest of the um, people that have imbibed just start dancing with each other in the hallway, laughing and ignoring Raga. Someone should go escort these people to a nice, safe location. Yeah, let's. I think uh, it's gonna take all of us. Yeah, let's all do that. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> They're just now all dancing together and having a good time. Uh, but their eyes are closed, as if they're sleep dancing. And all of them uh, are smiling broadly, but then on occasion they're yawning. Their eyes visibly closed, or almost entirely lidded, as it looks like they are all sleeping, but their bodies are still awake, dancing. And their heads kind of flop around as their necks struggle to keep up with their jerky body movements. I I hold up the bag so I'm kind of like head level and whisper into her head. Um, was this your do? Like, is this normal? Uh, she pokes her head out of the bag. Um, she smiling. Yes, happy. Yes. She looks up at you. Seems about right. Why? What's wrong? Look at them, they're all happy and smiling and dancing together. What were they doing earlier in the bar? Nothing? I I, I push her head in, mm. tie the tie the knot. They were tighter. okay. They were just sort of being miserable. You think I they know what a conga them. line is? What was that, Gim? I think they know what a conga line is. We just oh yeah. Hey conga everyone, line. you should follow the uh, follow the conga line of a moo. Oh, conga line! I love conga! Yeah, conga oh, line! That side room. You gotta go, come on! Conga line! Woo! Hey, con but oh yeah, I love conga! Come on, get in the middle, you guys! Alright, put one foot forward, yeah, walking down the hallway. Alright, get it here, you two. <laughs> Whee! Oh, we're having a good time. We are enjoying ourselves. <laughs> Enjoy ourselves into the side room. What the banger is this? This is legit. I gotta download this. Oh. <sighs> Over under on cracking her the over the yet. head. They, they lost them. Lost you. Woo! <laughs> Come on, y'all. Oh, we're conging. Also slightly lagging. I figured it was lag. Ah, <laughs> uh, where are we going? Yeah, where are we headed? Who cares? Yeah, who cares? Woo! No, no, no. Stay here with. With the big Woo! Guy. Oh, what's this do? Yeah, ooh, pretty light. Hey, well, who, what's out the window? Get, get, somebody cover the rear. Hey, ooh, what's going on over here? No, huh? no, you're you're gonna Whee! wanna go go that way. <laughs> you too. Oh, woo! Party in the hallway. Oh yeah! Hey, what a nice room! Um, this person right I love here this is that uh, another one of the people who are dancing? It is, yeah. Okay. It's a half yeah. woman. I will lead her towards the room as well. Wee! <laughs> come, come on, on you guys! Come Woo! on! Come on, Durgan! Come on, Durgan. <laughs> Uh, look at it, it's snowing outside. I love snow. Oh. There's a better way to see it in here. No, come this way. There's bigger windows this way. Come on, Durgan. Uh, Durgan is licking the window. I push him away. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're going eight. this way. Eight. Up, eight. milady. Yeah, come on, Durgan. Follow me. Follow hey, Durgan, me. come down here. Hey, Sindri. Yeah, what's up? Uh, hey. I need you. 
I need you to go check up on uh, Snowhide. He was there staring, eating the pot. Oh, yeah. Are they all in it? Yeah, that's all right. Are that six of them? I think. Wait, we missing. We lost somebody. Nope, the, the halfling's just hiding under the door. <laughs> Alright, Mumu, oh. come guard this door. How is Snowhide doing? Uh, Snowhide is just staring at the fire. Uh, his hand is on the pot. Or excuse me, on the spoon that's in the pot, but he's not stirring it. He's just staring. Hey, come on, Snowhide, and I'll uh, kind of drag him. Hey, Raffi, we're going to guard this door. You Snow go Hide, help, you come too. Help them and bring him down, Snowhide, down here. Uh, he doesn't say anything. He's just very quiet as he follows you. Come on. Uh, Sindri, make me an insight check. Uh, Sindri, with the way Snowhide has been very quiet and his eyes dilated and glazed over, it's a stark contrast between the dancing of the other patrons that have imbibed the shrooms. He seems almost... placid. Okay. You... you okay there, Snowhide? Yes, he only makes a guttural noise in response. He just stares at you, a bit of drool hanging from his lip. I am going to... Um... Kind of go in... Go into his head and be like, You there, buddy? There seems to be no presence in his head, just in echoing of your own psychic voice. He is very empty. And even someone like you, who can normally detect surface thoughts, there are no thoughts he is having right now. He is not having any of his own thoughts at all. Hey, hey Raffi. Um, I'm gonna try something. If Snowhide starts doing anything, smack him over the head. To find something. Uh, anything that's not his current moment. Current. If he does anything weird. No, what are you doing? His mind's blank. I have a. I think because of the the mushrooms, which this little troublemaker and I shake the pillowcase <laughs> caused, um, he might be psychically connected to the you know the the necromancer. Oh, Raphael, make me an insight check. Uh, Snowhide's breathing is even as he stares at Sindri, his hands slack at his sides. <sighs> okay. Um, I go and I make a connection and I go. So, who am I really talking to? The only sound that responds to you is the echoing of your own psychically projected voice. Okay, so you, I don't uh, think... Asindri, you do get the distinct feeling that you are being watched.
I make a connection with Rafi and I go, yep. Uh, the necromancer's in there. Uh, Rafi, can you go get everybody? Yeah, I think we need to take him with yeah. us. And I'm going to lead Snowhide. I'll make a connection with them. Follow me. And I'll lead um, Snowhide up to our room upstairs. Oh, hey, guys. What's going on in here? Oh, they're dancing. Dance party uh, central in here. I, I lost the banger. I'm sure there's dancing. Can you guys uh, come with me? Uh, sure. Is there any lock on the door? Anything? There is. Um, actually, the keys are at Raga's belt. You can just take them. Raga will. Yeah. Uh, I grab. Not the keys. mind. Yeah. I'll, I'll take them. The jangling I mean, uh, metal ring of keys. Raga uh, gives you a smile, Amumu, and a quick kiss on the cheek. Ah. Yeah, sweet. Here you, go. Here you go. You're the keys. You lock the door. So what's up, Raffy? Um, we need to uh, get Snow Hide and just take him to our room. There are things right. going on I can't explain right this minute. Oh, uh, Mon well, Monty and Sindri upstairs? Yeah. Alright. Chody is missing, but... I mean, I was in the kitchen while y'all shuffled everyone out. Oh. I thought you were uh, AFK for a sec. Yeah, I did too. Nope. I was uh, taking care of the stew. Y'all were doing that. Right, Monty, what are you doing with the stew? I am destroying water and trying to desiccate that entire pot. Monty, as you cast destroy water on the pot, all that is left on this uh, sizzling black cauldron is a quickly smoking meat jerky as all the water has quickly been dispersed. But the jerky, if you leave it on the stove, will also start smoking and potentially getting on fire. You can easily remove the cauldron from the stove if you wish. I do. Now that it has been rendered incredibly inedible, the goblins, uh... uh yeah. Here, we'll, we'll we'll scrub that out. We we know it's dangerous. We won't uh, we won't eat out of it. Yeah, we'll give it we'll give it a good wash and throw away the water afterwards. Good idea. Needed to make sure that there was nothing left in there for the spores to transfer through. Now, stink hide. Uh, Monty, we think that huh? uh, the necromancer's in his head right now. So be careful what you say in front of him. In front of Snowhide. Uh, Stinkhide is currently Stinkhide. chewing on an old plate. Stinkhide, Hello. Did you have any of the stew that was being cooked over on the fire? Mm. No, just plate munchies. This one was yesterday's salmon. You, goblin. I, did any yes? of those stew dishes come back and get cleaned yet? Uh, we, uh, w w as soon as you told us about the potential food poisoning, we went and gathered all the bowls. Uh, I yes, we put them aside separately. You might be better off just destroying those bowls in general. Stink hide. Uh, I don't really know how to say this nicely, so I'm just going to say it. Mm -hmm. Uh... Some of the mushrooms were put inside that stew, and Snowhide has eaten some of it. Oh, oh no. Will Snowhide be okay? We're going to do our best to make sure everyone comes out of this safely, but we do need you to tell us if you feel Sibba is nearby. I don't, I don't sense her, no. But I also didn't eat any of, any of that stew. How did, how did, I, we did not put any of the mushrooms in there. That wasn't us, I, I swear. 
we know it wasn't you. There was unfortunately a bit of a playful fay that came in here and snuck around unknowns to the rest of us. Oh. Now, Stinkhide, if, if by some chance uh, Sibba is in control or in connection of Snowhide, would you be able to tell? Uh, he nods. Yeah, okay. he, yes, I, th I think I can. Then I'm going to need you to be brave for a minute and you need to come with us. We want to try to keep him safe. He, he nods. Of, yes, of, of course. <laughs> All right, Raffi. Let's see who the damage is. Yeah, we're going up to our room. Uh, a fairy? How did she get the mushrooms? Yeah. That part I'm still not sure about. She says she just came across it, traveling up from the south. Uh, but the grove is the west. Perhaps she's playing a trick on you. Hmm? It wouldn't be the first time. Those fey, they are slightly playful sneaky folk they do like playing tricks on others I hear as I move yeah. snow hide through walls he had a lot of mushrooms <laughs> he did I was so many you. I'm moving once everybody's in here we're gonna block this door yeah and someone time to uh time to a chair. Well, Raffi's the best of time, people. Up. Giggity. Giggity. Yeah, I'll... All right. I'm locking this door. Or do I have the key to this door? Uh, you do, with uh, Raga's key ring. All right, I'm locking it. You lock it. Hey, think I close that... Mi uh, or I'm gonna go over there and lock this other door, too. Uh -huh. ah, it is shut. Can I lock this door too? Mm hmm. All right, I'm locking this one too. Stink hide. I've lost connection. Yeah, I think we all did. Oh, okay, I'm good. Apparently, locking the doors has killed connection <laughs> to the server. Yeah, I've, I've, I've lost everything. Yeah, well, you gotta let the Wi Fi out. It needs room <laughs> to breathe. Big F. Gim uh, until the server's reestablished, server. you can. Uh, no! 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 This one happened no. the other day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mid game. Hang on. Okay, we're gonna put on some Sims music. One second. Boop, 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 boop. All right. One second. God. Yeah, who's Why got do I hate the, everything? Uh, who's got that Wii Shop music? Can we get that playing real quick? I got, I got it. I got it. Do, Here we go. Elevator do, music. Do, 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 do. Has everyone seen the the Speak with Dead scene from the D and D movie? Oh, I have not. Is, nope, is this no spoilerinas? Is this the new movie? Yes, this is with the Chris new movie. Chris Pine. And has yes. it come out yet? No, but they posted a clip of it. All right, I'll, I think a I'll clip got posted in uh, the Arctis Discord. But Nadina, mm -hmm. as a DM, you will find it hilarious. I, I will watch it. I will watch it. I'm watching it. it right now. Where's Stinkhide? All right. Oh, there he is. I'm blind. He's right beside you. <laughs> Perfect. Everybody get back into the game. And, oh, actually, it looks like everybody's here. Let us continue. As you have just brought Snowhide into your upper room, but Snowhide seems to be not all there right now. Please leave a message after the beep. Sindri, are we restraining this guy? Yeah, restrain him just in case. All right, let's tie him up and put him in that middle chair. Whoever's tying him up, make me a sleight of hand check. 
If anyone would like to assist, you can make that check with advantage. I will I also helping. give guidance. Ooh. Gim, uh, you will secure him with a roll of 19. As Gim secures the knoll, tying his arms down to his sides, you get no struggle from the knoll, but he shifts his gaze from person to person, deliberately looking at Montgomery and Sindri, Gim, Amumu, and Raffaella each in turn. Saying nothing, slivers of drool falling, falling from his lips. I will make a connection and go, Hello, Sibba. Uh, we meet again. Uh, one moment. Sibba got stuck behind a door also, apparently. Hello, Sindri. How are you doing since we last saw each other? I see you have been busy in my absence. Busy? Um, I don't know if I'd call it busy. I'd, I'd say it, we were fulfilled. Hey, hey guys, have, have we been busy or has it just been fulfilling? I'm just too busy fucking dancing. The dreams are not for you, dream slave. Turn back. That world is not for you. Can we all hear this or only Sindri? Uh, just Sindri. Yeah, no. We're, we've got a job to do. Stink hot. What can you tell me? Mm. I don't... I don't know what is happening. He just whines and tucks his tail between his legs. Mm. It's all right, Stink hot. You're safe here. Would you feel safer if we tied you up too, just in case? No, no. Stinkhide is is fine. Snowhide uh, stares at Sindri unblinkingly. And tears begin to well up in the poor Noel's eyes as they begin to dry out. I'm sorry, Snowhide. It's okay so Seba what 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 makes you think a, a traitor as being such as yourself deserves the dream you and your other dream walkers think you own the dreaming Every passing thought and inspiration, foolish. No, we just try to help out and do good. Good? What good are you doing? Preventing the knowledge and memories from being accessed by others. A veritable oh. treasure trove you let waste. Pathetic. No. We we more just help people that have been infected by nightmares. Curing nightmares. What's oh. important. You think that God the yarn on Ned was a nightmare. <clears throat> you 
have seen nothing yet. I don't know. I've seen a lot of stuff. But Snowhide lets out a long whimper. And you see blood begin to trickle from his nose. Can I see his Can I do an inside check on him? Sure. Uh, Gim, as you uh, look at Stonehide, his body is stiff and rigid. He, as his mind is being controlled externally by Sibba and whatever fungus has reawoken in him by the consumption of the uh, tainted stew, he is so desperately seeking to regain control of his body. But whatever Sibba is doing, um, she seems to have control over the fungus that is ravaging his body. And as you stare and look at the knoll, under his white fur, bumps and lumps begin to appear and quiver, and then disappear back into his musculature again. And he begins to twitch slightly and whimper. <laughs> hey, Gim. Hey, I'll make a psychic connection to not try to alert uh, Sibba. Can you try casting? Do you have the ability to restore him in any way? I could throw a heal on him where I could try to remove the poison, but I don't know if that would do anything. Might be worth a shot. I'll try my best. I'll make the connection with Sibba again. You're gonna let this one go. Oh. He's all yours. One moment, please. And with a, a whine and a whimper, Snowhide's body begins to convulse violently in the chair. He grips the sides. And you notice the bulges under his skin start pulsating. And what emerges from his body with a sickening splat out of his chest is a single tentacle eye stalk did they come out like aliens out of his chest its length is like something out of straight out of the void lined with eyeballs that blink at you curiously and go back into the now hollow cavity of poor stinkhide's body Uh, as he cannot bear. The trauma of the entity leaving his chest. And with one last gasp, <coughs> he falls still. The eye stalk turns and blinks at the rest of you, fixing you with a strange, slitted gaze before going back into the body of Snowhide and disappearing. What was that? Is he... It... Is he okay? Can you... Is he gone? Like, Snowhide is... It, is just gone. Very obviously deceased, as whatever has erupted from the 
inside of his chest, uh, this this tentacle, yeah, uh, has gone through both bone and muscle and sinew, leaving his innards outwards. I stick so, another step back. So, rev question: though. Revivify wouldn't heal this, would it? Uh, no. Re Revivify would uh bring Snow White back. back. It bring him back from death, right? Hmm. It sure would. Okay, I'm gonna cast it on him. Okay, I'm target him and give it a cast. Stink hot, I'm sorry you saw that. I reach into the bag, pull out the the fairy, and like by the collar, I hold her out and like this is what you did. She's she looks oh what? Give him a couple bunions. <gasps> yeah. I went yeah. back in the bag. She ducks back into the bag. I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, maybe that's why you uh, consult with people before you do things to make sure that they're having a good time. <coughs> Snowhide clutches at his chest, <laughs> which has healed up thanks to Gim's revivify. And he looks down at himself and the remains of his uh, tattered shirt. And he looks up at Sindri and Raphael and Gim. <sighs> that was, that was no nightmare. <sighs> so, sorry you had to go through that, Snowhide. Right. Yeah, I'll throw a little heal at him. Try to heal him up a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> For a moment, I... All I could hear in my brain was... Sibba. Just her voice telling me to... Follow and watch. I, I, I couldn't do anything. I... I'm sorry. No, you're you're okay. You did nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, I still feel itchy, strange. But the voice, her voice is gone for now. We're gonna have to be more careful around these mushrooms. Yeah. Okay. He, when uh, when Doofus gets back, we ask him about this. What was it called? Rhyme mushroom or rhyme uh, shroom? Rhyme shroom. Ask him if he knows uh, like an antidote for that or something. Uh, he would most likely know a way to keep the hallucinogenic effects at bay, but the way Sibra's spores. Control us? Probably not. She is like a, a host, feeding us information, commands in our brains. Ah. <sighs> Um, hey, Tala, ask Tala how long does the stuff usually last for these dancing people? You, you, you heard him. You can answer. Not bad. Oh, how long does it last? Um, usually about two to three hours. Okay, about four hours of like nonstop dancing. I think that, yeah, probably about four. All right. Thank you for that. Put her back in the bag. Yep. <laughs> I'm back in the bag. Ah, 
Snowhide um, is just uh, staring at the fire. <sighs> Holding someone, like a paw over his heart. Can someone untie Snowhide? Yes, yeah, I'll do it. I forgot he was got... tied up. <laughs> Sorry, Snowhide. We knew she was making a connection through you and tried to be safe. Uh, I understand. Uh, I don't f feel very well. Oh, you just went to something very dramatic. Traumatic. It was also dramatic. Yeah, I don't know what that little eyeball thing that came out of you, but I hope it's gone. I don't think that's the last we've seen of that. I don't think that's physically in him either. I think no. it has to do with she pushed it out. What was that? Something dark and evil that shouldn't exist. Could I roll an arcana check to see if I knew what it was? Go ahead. Guidance. Judging by its strange, almost formless nature and uh, odd, almost uh, aberration-like existence. Something like that is certainly not a fungus, as you are probably aware of. But the way that manifested and then disappeared, it is possible it is a nightmare or a lingering effect of it. Um, its tentacle vaguely reminds you of the Yananid, but you don't remember that having eyeballs on it. Okay, so I think that eye stock might have been connected to the Anan Ed somehow. Probably twisted because Siba has had her hands on it for some time. Or connected because she took those sea elves out of Doofus's dream. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Sindri, with a, with a 15, uh, you also just feel confident that that is a manifested nightmare. I think it's probably a manifested nightmare, so that's... So you that's say fun. That Sibba can manifest nightmares out of the dream. Yup. <laughs> I pull her head out. What was that? What? You can't just manifest nightmares from the dream. There's a wall between our worlds for a reason. And a reason why you, well, Okay, not like the royal you aren't supposed to be there. Because you all you want to do is control it and steal from it. Hmm. Yeah, right. and that's why that powerful necromancer is why we have to stop her. That necromancer is abusing the dream and abusing these gnolls. We need to figure we need to stop her. If it is a her, we don't know anymore. Yeah, I have no idea. We just call her Sibba. That might not even be her real name. If she can manifest nightmares out of people, that's... Oh, she, she shudders. That's a terrifying power. She I'll, I'll stole go... memories from a nightmare. I'm just gonna yeah. get back in the bag now. Yeah. Have, have you learned your lesson yet? Yep. Yep. Please don't hit me against the table again. That was actually really painful. No, I was thinking of letting Mumu have a crack against the wall. Oh, come on. Oh, let me Monty. shit on her. Hey, Montgomery. I'm into that. You know the Fae. Yes, sir. You know the Fae better than any of us. Is there a way to make them promise that they can't break or... Like, I've read stories of a fae makes a promise and they break it and it'll could destroy them, but I don't know much about them. The trick 
to dealing with Faye is you have to make sure that they don't think the promise is a game. I, lo I love games! Miss Tala, if you would come out of the bag for just a moment. Ta-da! Now, what I would like you to understand is that should this problem not be contained, and if this Sibba, if this necromancer is not any well controlled, we're not going to have the opportunity to provide you people with whom to play games. True. So but... we need to find a way to stop this. And unfortunately, due to your playing, you have kind of made this problem worse. Now, I'm willing to overlook that if you are willing to enter an agreement that you will assist us in solving the problem that you created. Hmm, that doesn't really sound like fun, and there's really not anything in it for me. Uh, I decline. Not, not, bag. not dying. I'll eat you if you don't. We're going to leave you in that bag until you agree. You might actually bump into a lot of things. Well, this isn't an agreement or a game now. This is just strong arming, so. Yep. Mm. That's not very fun. Listen, uh. Having how your about... friends die in front of you isn't very fun either. I bet. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. Um. How about this? Uh. How about you beat me at a game? But you pick, you pick the game. And then if uh, you beat me, then you get your way. And if I beat you, then you have to do something for me. I've got a great game. What's that? We put you in the bag, smack you against the wall. And then you put us in a bag and smack us against the wall. And whoever cries out in pain harder wins or loses. Hmm. I've played this game already. Oh, let me just sit on her. We got a couple good farts lined up. It's not a very yeah, fun but, game. But that's not a game. This one, you know, we get like you just crank me. her against the wall. Well, no, you would be the one cranking her against the wall. And I so doubt she can up. pick you up. Come on, can't you think of something up. any better? Like a coin, heads or tails? Throw some dice. A, ri a, a riddle? A song? Come on, at least make it interesting. I apologize, Miss Tala. It seems as though this group of people are very set on destroying you, and you choose not to accept my offer, so I'm going to have to politely decline and find my way out of this. Best of luck to you, though. No, wait, 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 I'm sure... Wait, 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 wait! I, we could fight, we could come to some agreement, I'm sure. I offered you an agreement and you said that you didn't want it. Unfortunately, I'm not really inclined to move, considering the fact that you nearly cost someone the ability to breathe. <sighs> I can be just happy calling on all sorts of fey friends. I could add one more. Or I could walk away and pretend I never saw you. Oh, that's... that's terrible. Why would you do that? I do believe that the lives of others do exceed the cost of the one when the one is being particularly selfish. Well, don't be ridiculous. I'm clearly the most important person in the room. But, but you can't just... leave. Oh, I certainly can. No, 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 you, you can't. I would like to see you provide evidence as to how I can't. I will give you one more chance to take that offer. And what are your terms again? You caused part of this problem. So mm -hmm. you are going to be instrumental in helping us solve it. Especially oh. since the information you provided about where you found these things also turned out to not fit the information that I was provided later. So mm -hmm. if you can tell the truth and help us fix this, 
then I'm sure all of this disappears and we can go back to having fun the way you like to have fun and the way we like to have fun and nothing, nothing negative comes out of this. Hmm. <sighs> or right. you can choose that you want to play a game and you find out that their version of playing a game is called Smash the Fae. I don't like Smash the Fae. All right, all right. I've actually been in Asir for a while now. I didn't come up from Arc Terrace. I actually came from the west, towards Glacia. I crossed over the mountains that are west of here. But before I got to the mountains, there was this, uh, well, this curious little cart and a crossroad. And I went to check it out. But when I was flying over, there were some gnolls just hanging around. And I was like, what are these gnomes doing here? And then it's when I thought, oh, that's cute. They're trying to ambush. And it was like really adorable. So I followed their paw prints home and they had this nice little secluded little mushroom grove. And it was growing all sorts of lovely plants. And I was like, well, this is a spot. I would love to actually just have this place. And so I was like, oh, what could I do to possibly get rid of these gnolls in the most efficient way as possible? And then, you know, take their growth as, oh, and make it a little bit nicer. They've, they've been there too long. It's clearly awful. Um, and I noticed that they had all of these rhyme shrooms growing around there. And, uh, well, when they discovered that a bunch of them were gone, uh, they got a little heated. Ahem. Um, but then I left, and they can't catch me, because I fly, and they don't, and they're strictly at a disadvantage, so I got my rom shrooms, and oh, that's that. So now I have to tell you where the grove is, huh? Oh, but I wanted that for myself. I had these nice little waterfalls and everything. What? Stink hide. Does any of that sound insincere? Mm -mm. Oh, that's that's right. The entrance to our grove is uh, a little bit lower than the snow, kind of underground a little bit, so it's a tiny bit warmer than the surface. It does have some waterfalls, and uh, yes, there is a cart. Ahem, uh, uh a, a, a trap area, yes. It's where our hunters keep an eye on things, make sure no one gets near the grove. Oh, yes! Yes, the angry-looking gnolls with the arrows. stink -eyed nods. I don't know if they're still there, but... It isn't a post-watch. Yeah, there you have it. I stole their mushrooms. Is that what you wanted to hear? I find it very interesting that you were able to do all of that, and the necromancer was none the wiser. Oh, well, um, it's probably because I can do this. Boop! And she just goes invisible. Stay in front of the door. Check the windows. I don't believe this is going to be accurate because if you remember, Miss Ellie saw something different in the dream than what we saw when we were in it. I find it hard to believe that the necromancer would not be able to see through that invisibility, especially with a dreamwalker like the Fae. You hear from somewhere in the room. What are you saying? That she just let me have these. Yep. It's quite possible she let you have them, knowing that the Fae are prone to pranks. And by doing so, you would be helping her out and spreading her control. Uh, she reappears, and she's sitting on 
a chest of drawers in the corner of the room. Oh, oh, yeah, that's that's bad. Stink hide, snow hide. Is that the only place that you they grow? Is that one grow the little area of the grove, or does she have them growing in multiple places? Uh, the stink hide nods. Uh, yes, there's there's a small uh, rivulet that flows through the caverns of uh, of Sibba. and there's also the, well, the the waterfalls coming off of the larger uh, mushroom fronds in the grove proper. I don't know what we're going to do, guys. Yeah. Are we feeling comfortable that we have contained this small incident? As soon as the few hours wear off for them dancing, yes. I kind of want to go check on them to see if they're still side effects? I'm still... It hasn't passed three hours or four hours, but Miss Tala said it would be three or four hours. This is... Before it wears off. It's it's Hala. Hala Rhymery. Oh. Not Hala. Cheap size. I figured I'd at least give you that much. Well, thank you for the honesty. So what's the plan now? Well... The only thing I can think of is sending a message to um, Doofus to get his butt back here because there was an incident. And then setting out in the morning. I definitely need sure? a, a night's rest. But are you sure that Snowhide is no longer carrying the corruption? He's still carrying the spores, but the large spores that were affected by the by Hala are gone now. So if he gets infected again, he could easily be controlled again. Yeah, but it's, and I don't think Sibba would have killed Snowhide. If, if he hadn't served his purpose, that doesn't thinking, seem like something you do if you want to keep him around. I don't think Sibba appreciates any of their lives. He was just trying to scare us, I'm trying to flex her power and show us that she can reach out to these gnolls anytime she wishes. Yeah, uh, kind of worked. Only because she got the extra doses. We They stay here and don't have any more doses or any more mischievous fairy. They'll be all right. Uh, Montgomery, behind you. The lock wiggles. Uh, my apologies. Currently occupado, can you provide your name? Doofus? Gim, go ahead and unlock this door. Alright. Uh. Uh. Now, Hello. Miss Hall. Come in, Doofus. Hello, Doofus. I'm locking Do the door again. Doofus is here. Doofus has found... He puts down a sack. A satchel of herbs. All right, Doofus, that's good. Doofus, please meet Miss Hollow Rhyme Wreath. She is responsible for bringing some of those shrooms into the mill. Mer? There are shrooms in the mill? Also, why is the mill so empty? Raga? Where's Raga? They're we got him on the side room. Oh. We're all trying to dance. 
Mm. What? Uh, I have the bag still. Understand. With the, with, you know what rhyme shroom is, Doofus? He nods. Mm. Yes. Uh, a mushroom uh, said to grow out of waters purified by the, uh, 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 how close they are to ley lines. It says the water can occasionally be charged with the uh, magical energy of the area that infuses the shrooms with a, both a, a mystical quality and a potent hallucinogenic one. Mm. Well, Doofus, this is what Miss, this is what Sibba is using, uh, growing her rhyme shrooms and contaminating them with some sort of black evilness. Oh, but rhyme shrooms, those are, when used properly, they can give one visions, but also they can make one feel tired or sleepy. But they make the body active. Very strange, Rhyme Shrooms. Is there any way to flush those out of somebody's system? Mm. He thinks and rustles through his bag. Mm. Uh, Doofus walks over to the fire and he reaches in and uh, grabs a blackened piece of wood. And he crushes up the coal in his hand and grabs a cup off the table. He pulls out a, a pestle and a mortar from his pocket and begins grinding the, the ash. He sniffs Montgomery. <laughs> mm. He sniffs a Moo Moo. <laughs> mm. He continues crushing the mushrooms in his pestle, or excuse me, the the ash in his pestle. Uh. Do you have water? Uh, he asked Montgomery. Uh, I believe I have a water skin here somewhere. Uh, I do. If you give them ash mixed with water and flavor it with a bit of peppermint, it will at least make the effects Last significantly less. Ah, that's very good. Thank you. Yeah. This was similar to what we did to get rid of the seaweed out of Gobo's group. Very good for absorbing various toxins. But something that infests like a fungus cannot be so easily purged. But the effects can be lessened. Here, Snow Hide, drink this. Snow Hide makes a face, but drinks it. <laughs> Find some ash and mint and mix it with two extra parts water. Have them drink it. And they should be asleep, less dancing. I also suggest putting on buttered socks on their feet. If they try and get up, they will slip and fall back asleep. Also delicious when you wake up. Oh, delicious when you wake up. Doofus nods. Mmm, buttered socks. Butter on the inside or the outside? <laughs> Well, <laughs> he leans forward. Both. Mm. That's gotta feel terrible. He looks. Doofus has the softest feet in the land. 
He wiggles his toes. Also, the socks are extra delicious after they've been on your feet for eight hours. Ooh. I think that might just be a you thing. <laughs> Doofus frowns. I'll go give the others some of this charcoal. And hopefully they will sleep well. Why are you both in front of the door? We didn't want anything to escape out of here earlier. But... Oh. <laughs> Doofus will see to the others. Kim, Thank do you, you need to open the door? <laughs> uh, I give the keys to Doofus. <laughs> oh! Doofus has the You're... keys. You're gonna need this, buddy. Thank you. I will, um, make sure the bar is okay after I give everyone their medicine. Thank you, Dumas. Ah, you're welcome. Dumas sleeps. Stink hide takes a step forward. Okay. Now what? Now we have to wait for tomorrow, because we're going to have to set out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, rest. Hala raises her hand. Um, can I go? I think, I think we're done here, right? I'm done here. Malti, are, we, are you done with Miss Hala? I believe we're done for now. Miss Holla, if you would be so kind as to answer one last question for me. I'll consider it. What's up? The science and the use of magic have allowed for the control of many things except one. Unstoppable even to time. What is it? He thinks... I don't know. What? That's a riddle. When you get the answer to that, come find us again. She smiles. I will. Hmm. Ravages of time. May I? Please. I'll find you all again with the answer someday. Uh, it's been interesting. <laughs> well, I've had worse starts to friendships with Faye. Well, I know I'm exhausted, and I, if we're going to do some, some, uh, healing, some other stuff, I'm going to need to rest tonight. So, I'm going to catch some sleep. You guys, you just prep whatever you need to do with the guys. Yep. Stink Hide will uh, do a couple circles on the rug. Yeah. Oh. And he lays down. Oh, this is nice. These are bunk beds, right? Uh, they have a pull-out. So you, if uh, you need oh, okay. a, a bed to the side, there's like one, another mattress underneath. Snowhide just stares at the fire. It doesn't look like he feels comfortable with sleeping yet. It's fine. It's fine. I'll keep an eye on you as you all sleep. Don't worry about it, Snowhide. We'll be fine. You just get some rest. Clear your mind. Uh, my brain, just, my head is killing me. Stink Hyde pats him on the shoulder. Okay. My goal is not to let you die. I'm here to say to make sure you see the end of this, Snow Hyde. Uh, 
Is that... Whatever... Is that still... Inside of me? That... Horrible thing? Ugh, he scratches at his fur. I think he used you as a vessel to escape out of you when she had control of you. Right now, she don't have control of you. So she can't force it out. So we gotta stop her from controlling you anymore. He nods. Just so... Don't want to sleep. It's fine, you don't have to sleep. But just try to relax. He sighs and reclines back in the chair. <sighs> You're right. You all can take a long rest. And what might be your last long rest in this campaign? At least this chapter. And you all take a much needed rest before you set out in the morning to head towards the uh, mushroom grove of Sibba. But first you have some mountains to get over and a couple knolls that Hala has warned you are waiting outside of the grove, warding off anyone who may enter. But now with a map, a solid location, and you save the life of Snow High, not once, but twice. It seems that you have officially gained the respect of the spared knoll. But will you all find Simba and be able to put an end to her fungus-based control over the knolls? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, that will be the end of today's session. And I hope you all had a good time. <laughs> I did. Uh, I did yeah, the, yep. the, the voice of the thing beyond, I'm no shit, I jumped out of my fucking chair. That was, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Good. We can good. reset our spells before we go to before we leave the, on next week, right? Uh, yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm probably gonna change some of my spells for this journey. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, that will be it for today. Thanks for joining me, and uh, I'll see you. I'll see you next week for some more D and D. Oh yeah, a happy birthday, Sindri! Happy birthday, Thank happy buddy. birthday! How old are you now? Old are you, Sindri? 32. Woo! Oh, right. Young man. Young, look at him. <laughs> look at him he in his 30s. He can almost rent a car now. He's doing it. Hey, I've got a He's credit a card. Baby. I can rent a car now. Yay. I mean, could you physically rent a car? Yes. Would you financially recover from the from the endeavor? No. No. Yeah, absolutely not. Will the car smell like cigarettes? Also, yes. Okay. <laughs> Maybe in the States. It's a little different. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot you lived in America's hat. Yeah, he's a maple leaf. <laughs> they oh, have, like, standards span? and protect no, protections not, like, there. No, literally like a hockey fan. Like, you're actually like a leaf. <laughs> yeah, but you can't say a Leafs fan or a leaf to a Canadian who is aware of hockey. Yeah. Right? It's, that's, just, that's, a mis that's just a mistake. D don't compare me to Canada's asshole. <laughs> and I mean, that's that's just, you know, that's the same as, you know, looking at someone and being like, you're from America. You're one of them Cowboys fans, aren't you? I know Posh is. Yeah, he oh, loves no, them. Got him. Yes, he is. <laughs> Got him. He loves them. He has a poster of Dak Prescott with hearts all over it. He kisses it every night. Uh, before he every goes. night. Yeah. If, if that was true, we would have to resort to the classic Michael Jordan. Stop it. Get some help. Stop it. Fuck them kids. Fuck them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Fuck them kids. Well, your uh, time with this story is growing short. Have you all enjoyed it I'm so far? I'm sure this will be fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's been great. Yes. Good, good. So... What happens, like, you keep talking about campaigns, and I, I don't, like, what does that mean? Sorry. Yeah, you, so usually, um, uh, I set kind of a, uh, 
like a like a story that I want to tell with the players, and I usually give it like a relatively definitive like beginning and end, and then the uh, things that happen in the middle can be all all sorts of things. Um, but usually, when a story reaches its conclusion, um, I'll uh, we'll usually like take a break. I'll take a step back and talk to the players and see kind of like um, what you guys enjoyed about the game, what you want to do more in the game, what you'd like to do less of in the game. Uh, and then like talk about see like the next um, season because usually like the first um, quote unquote like season of a game I try and introduce you more to the world so it's not um, a lot about you delving into your backstories it's more of you experiencing the world and understanding how to interact with it and then now that you've gotten there we can talk more about like your characters um, motivations your backstories now that you've gotten uh, basically the hang of like driving around arctis you uh, understand like the region the climate like the the magicalness of it um and then I, I try and get an idea of just what you guys enjoy doing um and then uh because the campaign is ultimately like built around you guys and then uh usually in the next season i'll have things be a little bit more like player oriented if you guys want to flesh out your backstories a little bit more or if you've just enjoyed um experiencing the story i can give you another one but it, it's like it's more of a point where we just stop and pause and then we get together and uh kind of assess like hey what did we enjoy what did we not enjoy and then we delve into the next the next season so it's really it's not like you know anything too serious or too official but it's just a, a nice stopping point where we can just reflect and um yeah and Im improve because i always like improving on my games as much as possible um and each player is different and enjoys engaging with the game in different ways I like hearing from you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and you gotta have time to prepare. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, I, figured, I figured that. Because yeah. if if you're like, oh, like you know, I don't like um, real strong story based games. I want to be more, um, you know, like character. My axe in your face. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, I or I want combat. Then I'll I'll design more like combat encounters for you. You, because I remember you were saying that. People and the order can only do it for so long. So if we finish this, we have to we stop being well I guess we'll always be part of the order, but then we'll just go adventuring. Yes. You can do pretty ah. much whatever you want when you're off duty. You're on duty for three months. And how long are we off duty for? The rest of the time. No no, so three months oh, on then... Oh, three months on uh, the rest of the year, like off. Um, oh. some, some Dreamwalkers do get called in more regularly, but, uh, Elitha has told you that it takes a toll on people's minds. And if you start, like, losing it and going crazy and bringing that into someone else's, like, dream, basically, like, you can't bring mental illness into someone else's dream, right? Because they don't want you manifesting nightmares in somebody else's head. Like, that is like yeah. one of the worst things that could possibly happen. So, they want you to, like, go out, take a break, do you, and then come back and be, like, you know, dedicated to the order. So. Yeah, because I can think of some slaver towns that need visiting. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, um, do you guys want to end on a D&D &D dad joke? Sure. Do it. Why do Loxodons get advantage on stealth what the hell's a loxodon uh they are elephant people elephant why people. okay cool why because everyone ignores the elephant in the room <laughs> oh my i'm out <laughs> i'm fucking no i so i the other one i did watch that clip that um smash was talking about as a D and D as a dm <laughs> adina you okay. will fucking laugh your ass off <laughs> It's just a clip. I will watch it. I will watch it. I will watch it. Night, night, Paj. Night, everyone. Good night. good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you for the game. I will see you next week. Yeah. Have a good night, everybody. All right. That's it for Arctis today. Whoa. Thanks for watching. 
Greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed the content, check out our YouTube. We're a teeny tiny channel, and I'd love it if you liked and subscribed. Question mark? You watch our VODs over on YouTube, catch us live on Twitch, and watch our shorts and funny moments on Twitter and TikTok. We have shorts. They're short. They're 30 seconds. The condensed goodness of Arctis. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed watching. Everybody in chat, thank you all for being here. I appreciate you. Reflection um, is wrapping up probably within the next two to three sessions. Um, and the first season will be over. And then we'll discuss what uh, the players want out of season two. But I hope they've enjoyed the story and I hope you have too. Thanks for joining me for some D&D. And I hope the servers are fully functional and back up for commas on Monday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.